What you are seeing here is a heat engine utilising a phenomenon known as the Curie point. As the metal on the end of the wire reaches a certain temperature within the flame, it begins to lose its magnetic properties, and hence falls away from the magnet by gravity. While the metal is out of the flame, it cools, therefore regaining its magnetic properties and is attracted to the magnet once more. In addition to this novel heat engine, the Curie point may be used with storage media to erase or write new data to a Sony mini disc or a magneto optical drive. Curie point temperatures can vary drastically, just like melting point temperatures. For example, gal gadolinium has a Curie point temperature of 292 Kelvin, whereas cobalt has a Curie temperature of 1400 Kelvin. Due to the inconsistent rates of cooling and heating as shown in this video, this Curie point engine is not a very efficient design. However, other designs could achieve a much higher efficiency. For example, a solar power device could heat up a strip of metal attached to a wheel. As one section heats up, it will lose its magnetic properties and the following section is attracted to the magnets, pulling it into the heat source. This operation would continue indefinitely provided there was a constant heat source. In this case, this would be using a lens to focus the sunlight. This would provide a rotating component that could be useful for efficient, low maintenance power generation. A Stirling engine runs on the principles of gas expansion. An airtight container is filled with a set volume of gas and a movable baffle to act as the main piston. As the lower plate is heated, the gas expands, applying pressure to the main piston and moving it upwards. With this, the flywheel raises the secondary piston slightly out of phase, causing an increased volume and therefore reducing the pressure. In order to fill this volume, and by convection, the heated gas migrates towards the colder side and therefore contracts, causing the main piston to fall again. This cycle is then repeated again as the gas below the baffle heats and expands once more. This process will now be slowed down for clarity. The Stirling engine was invented in 1816 by Robert Stirling and represented an efficient and safer alternative to steam engines. However, as steam engine components became more robust, Stirling engines were eventually phased out in large scale applications, though on smaller domestic scales they could be operated by anyone who could supply a heat source. In the 20th century, it became overtaken by the electric motor and smaller internal combustion engines. The Stirling engine is still used in some specific applications such as in submarines, auxiliary power systems, or wherever a low noise prime mover is required. However, its applications are fairly limited and there are not many used in the industry today. Demonstrated here is the Hero steam engine. This is named after Hero of Alexandria, a Greek mathematician and engineer born in 10 AD who was among the first to create a similar device. Water is inserted into the vessel through a cap at the top and a heat source is supplied at the bottom. As the water within the bowl heats, it begins to boil and transition to steam at high pressure. This high pressure steam is then expelled through two narrow vents at the side of the container, supplying the momentum necessary to rotate the engine. Another such design is having a boiler, or cauldron as Hero used, in a closed container with the steam being fed directly to the hollow chamber where it will be expelled at high pressure. This means the engine can run for much longer as it is not limited by the amount of steam it can expend before the pressure becomes too low. An illustration of the device is shown here. 
In Roman Greek times, this was called a yolipile and was intended to be a temple wonder. As the name suggests, a bimetallic strip consists of two different metals. When subjected to heat treatment, the strip will deform as the two metals expand at different rates. This is usually steel and copper and often leads to coiling of the metallic strip. Upon cooling, the shape becomes uniform again. Using this, a heat engine can be designed using a seesaw type device as shown here. As the bimetallic strip is heated, it coils and a weight attached to it shifts over to the centre of the balance, causing the seesaw to tip. As it tips, the bimetallic strip cools in the air and reverts to its original shape, causing a tip the other way, allowing the process to repeat when the strip is inside the flame. While this concept is similar to the Curie Point engine, the actual process is much different.